Well, hey, all you are tappers out there back here in the studio, as you can see, we had our the last man standing in a way, Kansas City Mafia. And he's younger than me, actually, he's only 73. Willie Camasano Jr. died today. His father was the feared mafia enforcer and capo named Willie the Rat or Willie Rats. Named him Willie Rats because he had a rat terrier that liked to go around and kill rats. Now, Willie Jr., we used to call him Willie the Mouse. A lot of people called him Little Willie. But he was he was his father's son, and they were both feared mafia enforcers. So Willie Jr., I remember one time we tried to run in on him. He was he had a connection with a guy that had a buy here, pay here, used car lot. He must have probably was getting money out of that. We had a guy undercover, got him all decked out in a crapola car, and he he came in as like looking for to buy a car and loaded up his trunk with a bunch of property that looked like it might be stolen. And, and so he, you know, he said, well, you know, hey, I got a deal here. And they knew that Willie Jr., he's a big hunter and a fisherman, you know, had fishing equipment, had really high-end fishing equipment. He had some other things. I don't remember what all he had exactly, but mainly the fishing equipment. And and, and so he came in two or three times and, and he tried to move in a little closer when Willie Jr. was there and tried to interest him in some of this fishing equipment he had. You know, come on out, take a look at this in the trunk and, you know, really high end stuff. And, and Willie Jr. just, you know, he, he didn't even hardly talk to him. He just said, ah, no. And, and walked back away and just stayed away from the guy. So he was, he was pretty canny. He was the kind of a guy we'd follow him and follow him and not really see anything. But yet he'd all of a sudden disappear and then something would happen. I know we had a, a murder one night and the last guy he was playing darts with, the victim was playing darts with Willie Camasano Jr. And we were all around and watching this that night. And then that guy left and we stayed there. Willie, he disappeared. Somehow he slipped under our radar and that guy was found dead the next day. So, you know, go figure. We don't know. Another time, uh, kind of interesting little story is there was an FBI agent. A friend of mine was, he was working on putting a hidden microphone with a, t a technical team, a black bag team that came in from town, putting a microphone in the trap or the Columbus Park Social Club. So on top of the social club, there was about three stories of apartments. It's a real old building over in what we call Little Italy or the North End. Tony is down in the basement finishing up some of the wiring. A couple of the other guys, the real highly technical guys they brought in from out of town were already out and gone. He was putting up the wiring, you know, tucking it back up in and, and making sure everything was cleaned up and looking around and giving it the final inspection. And, and he started out the front door because what these guys did, we were running, we were what we call jiggering for him that night. And, and we just kind of like hung around in a marked police car and wore a uniform in case somebody came in and said, Hey, what are you doing? We, we'd go flying into action right away. And, and so he was, he was on his way out and he got to the front door and the, the stairs that went up to those upstairs apartments were right next to the front door of the social club. So he hears somebody, just he opens the door, he hears somebody clunking down and he closes the doors quietly and the other door, the apartment opens up. So he kind of hunkers down, he looks out. There's Willie Camposano Jr. walking out, getting his car, it was parked just down the street and driving off. This is about like 4.30 in the morning. You know, he'd done his thing, you know, went out and partied the night before, stayed there for a while and then was on his way home. He lived way out in the suburbs. That's another reason he was hard to follow is hell, you'd have to drive 30 miles to get out to where his house was to pick him up whenever he first went out on his rounds and running his traps, as we say. There's a couple of Willie Jr. stories. So Arriba Derche, Willie Camasano Jr., uh, rest in peace. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the line from, uh, I can't remember the group now, but a 70s group, uh, you know, I'll swear there ain't no heaven, but I'll pray there ain't no hell. So <laughs> Willie Jr., I bet you're praying there ain't no hell. You have, I hope you have been. And just one more little story in the life of a mafia detective. Oh, by the way, I ride motorcycles. Don't forget to watch out for motorcycles. And if you have a problem with PTSD, why well, get on their website, the VA website, get that hotline. If you've been in the service, and if you got a problem with drugs or alcohol, get hold of Anthony Ruggiano. Go to his uh, Reformed Gangsters YouTube page, and, and he's got some information there for you. Thanks, guys.